Hey, thanks for watching this video. There's more at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and there is the pie guy. All right, this is fifth grade, module five, lesson 11. And in this lesson, we're still using tiling. We're still using the area model. Uh, but this time, uh, we are going to be multiplying mixed numbers by mixed numbers. And this is really where it's important that we use the tiling method rather than that repeated addition concept of multiplication because you can't do that when both numbers are um, mixed numbers. Well, you can't do it easily when both numbers are mixed numbers. So this is a, another step closer towards that standard algorithm. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to go really quickly through these problems. It's going to be parents and teachers, your job is to pause and rewind and pause and rewind because I'm going to try and go fast through this, um, knowing that you have a pause button. And so the first thing we're going to do is fill in the lengths. So we've got two and three quarters units long. So we're going to fill in two and three quarters units long. And then we have right here for the units wide, we have one and a half units wide. And then the first thing is we could get the answer simply by adding all of these partial products, the areas of these four rectangles that we created. So this rectangle right here is 2, and then this rectangle right here is 1, so it's going to be 2 plus 1, and then this rectangle right here is 3 fourths, so it's going to be plus 3 fourths, and then we have this rectangle here, which is plus 3 eighths. And then just using uh, common denominators, so we know that this plus this is 3, plus this can be renamed as 6 eighths and 3 eighths. So we end up with 3 and 9 eighths square units, which is really 4 and 1 eighth square units. And so that right there is our answer four and an eighth square units. And so what uh, they also want us to do is they want us to actually multiply this, right? So what is this piece right here? Well, I'm going to start by writing, um, let's do one and a half times two and three quarters. All right, and then they want us to show the multiplication. So what's this multiplication right here? Well, that's 1 times 2. So I'm going to write this in, oh, let's do this in red. So that's going to be 1 times 2 plus. And then uh, right here is 1 times 3 fourths. So we're going to put that in 1 times 3 fourths. And then uh, right here, we have a half times two. So we've got plus one half times two plus, and then what do we have right here? Well, that's a half times three fourths. So that's going to be one half times three, uh, three fourths. All right. And so now we've got four multiplication problems to do. One, two, three, four. And that's why these are called partial products. Well, one times two is two. One times three fourths is three fourths. A half times two. Now this is tricky. I can do this in my head. One times two is two, so it's two over two, and that's one. That's one. And then plus, and then this is three eighths. Now how did I get that? Well, because one times three is three. 2 times 4 is 8. And now I can add these together, and I get it right over here. Right? This is, if I use a little commutative property, I could do 2 plus 1 plus 3 fourths plus 3 eighths. So really all I did is I swapped around the 3 fourths and the 1, and I get the exact same thing over here using the geometry. Uh, so I'm not going to go any further on that. Here, we have to draw our scaffold because they took it away from us. So let's let's do it. So the length is two and a half. The width is three quarters. So I'm going to draw that and I try and let relieve my students of the fear of trying to draw it proportionally. I don't want them to worry about that. So I just say here, draw this. And this represents your two and a half 
and this represents your three-fourths even if you didn't draw them proportionally and that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to take that two and a half and I'm going to split it up into two and a half. There's my two and a half. Now the three-fourths, because I don't have a whole number, this is three-fourths. And so now what I have is I have two, um, let's see, I have two sections. I have this section right here. And then I have this section right here. All right, so let's do them a piece at a time. So what is my blue section right here? Well, that's a height of 3 fourths. It's a width of 2. So it's going to be 3 fourths by 2. That's 6 fourths. That's 1 and 2 fourths. So the blue section is 1 and 2 fourths. Plus, now what's the red section? So the red section over here has a height of 3 fourths and a width of a half. So that's going to be 3 fourths times 1 half, which gives us, let's see, that would be 3 eighths. And so what do we have? So we're going to go down here and we're going to add in 3 eighths. Now the idea is uh, we're going to have to add, so we need common denominators. So we, we know that we can rename uh, 2 fourths to be 4 eighths. So we've got 1 and 4 eighths plus 3 eighths because that's golden there. And you get 1 and 7 eighths. 1 and 7 eighths what? Well, it's 1 and 7 eighths square units, and there's our answer, 1 and 7 eighths square units. Now, they want us to show uh, it as multiplication, right? So we've got that 3 quarters, or 3 fourths, multiplied by 2 and a half, and so using that distributive property, first we've got 3 fourths times 2, plus we've got that 3 fourths times 1 half, and so the idea is, well, 3 fourths times 2. What is that? Well, 3 times 2 is 6 over 4. So you've got 6 fourths plus, and then over here, you've got 3 fourths times 1 half, so that's 3 eighths. And so that's going to be 3 eighths, because remember, we just kind of multiply straight across. 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 6 fourths plus 3 eighths. Well, a couple of ways we could do it. I'm going to quickly just show you an alternative way. Well, let's just leave 6 fourths as it is not change it to um, a mixed number like we did over here. And let's leave 6 fourths as it is, but we are going to change it to 12 eighths so that we now have a common denominator. And that gives us 15 eighths. And 15 eighths does indeed equal 1 and 7 eighths. And of course, we've got square units. So that is uh, I'm giving you a, like an alternate view of how to multiply by leaving them as improper fractions. So we're going to draw our rectangle. And again, I tell my students, don't worry about being all ratio proportion and all that sort of stuff, uh, proportional. So here is my three and a third. And I'm going to say right here is my two and a half, all right? And then if I want to find my, so you can see that there's only two and a half, there's my three and a third, I have four problems, four areas to find uh, the answer to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of zip things along and combine our multiplication and the area and all that sort of stuff together. So what's the area of this rectangle right here? Well, it's got a height of two, it's got a width of three, so I'm going to say 2 times 3 gives me 6 square units. All right, so that's the first part. That's really important. And then what's, whoa, and then what's the um, area over here? Well, it's got a width of a half. I'm sorry, one-third. It's got a height of 2. So we know that we should do 2 times a third, which gives us, two-thirds units squared. So what do we have? We've got, so far, we've got six, and we've got two-thirds. 
as our partial products. And then we've got this down here. We've got a height of a half, a width of three, which means, oh, let's do it in green because I can. Uh, that means it's going to be a half times three, which is equal to three halves, which is equal to one and a half square units. And then lastly, uh, this last little piece right here is a height of a half, a width of a third, which gives us an area of one-sixth square unit. So what are we going to do with all of those partial products? We're going to add them. Six plus one and a half plus two-thirds plus one-sixth. And when we add all of those, we're going to get six plus one and three-sixths plus four-sixths plus one-sixth. So parents and teachers, that's a prime spot where you may need to pause and let students think about their common denominators and all of that sort of stuff. So we're going to get seven and eight-sixths, which is equal to eight and two-sixths. And that's eight and two-sixths square units. Eight and two-sixths square units. Of course, students might also write eight and a third square units. Here, another rectangle. And again, it's almost automatic. You know it's going to kind of look like this. Here is our three and a half. Here is our two and a fourth. And this is where you are going to start filling in your partial products. Right here is 2 times 3. Over here is 2 times a half. Down here is a fourth times 3. And right here it's a fourth times a half. You get those four answers and add them together. And that is going to give you your answer. So, uh, let's see. 2 times 3, that's 6. 2 times a half, that's going to be 1. A fourth times 3, that's going to be 3 fourths. A fourth times a half, that's going to be an eighth. And we are going to add all of those together. Now, parents and teachers, you may need to pause and let your students really think through what I just did, because that's kind of quick. 6 and 1 is 7, plus, and I'm going to change this to 6 eighths plus 1 eighth. So that gives us 7 and 7 eighths square units as our answer. Again, using the power of technology, parents and teachers, pause and rewind if you wish. And the last slide for this video, woohoo! A square has a perimeter of 25 inches. And so that means we need to figure out what are the lengths of this square. The idea is, well, that's pretty straightforward. That's going to be 25 divided by 4. So that gives us 6 and 1 quarter uh, inch per side. So that means this guy right here is 6 and a quarter inches. And that means this guy right here is six and a quarter inches. And so now they're asking, well, what's the area of the square? So what are we going to do? Well, that means we need to multiply six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I, you'll notice I just let, left off the units because I'm kind of simplifying this a little bit. So six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So let's draw our rectangle. But now we know that this is six and a quarter, and we know that this is six and a quarter. And so, watch how fast this is. This is pretty awesome. Uh, this area right here, that's 36 square units. This area right here, that's six fourths square units. This area right here, that's six fourths square units. And then this area right here is 1 16th square units. And so we're going to add 36 plus 6 fourths plus 6 fourths plus 1 16th. Now, parents and teachers, I'm going to let you 
guide your students through the rest of this problem, how to add these numbers together. And that wraps up a fun one. It's We're getting really close to the standard algorithm for multiplying two mixed numbers. So that was 5th grade, Module 5, Lesson 11.